YouTube, getting ready to render this bottom strip of the remaining fireplace. Uh, we're just going to use a standard cream render mix. Uh, I've wiped everything down. I'm about to wet the bricks. Now, the reason why we wet, wet the bricks, I'll show you on a render. And if you don't have it properly wet down first, and in this instance it was probably wet but with a bit of brick sawdust remaining, you end up with a substandard adhesion between the render and the brickwork. Okay, so this here is retained. We've also had a bit of an impact from the door up here, which has sort of put some stress on it. But it hasn't actually impacted through here, but it has lost. But you can tell drummy, drummy plaster or drummy render hasn't been cleaned first. Well, yeah, that's, that's exactly what's happened. So make sure you clean down your brickwork first, then wet it down. Now, the other thing you want to do when you're rendering is not make your render too wet. Because what can happen when it dries out is you end up with shrinkage. So here where I've done a bit of rendering, I've started the job, but here it was actually quite a thick piece and it was quite a wet piece. I was using the last of it. You can hear that drumminess there. It's shrunk back and it's ended up with cracks in the render. So that's what'll happen if your render is too wet in your mix. And this is what'll happen if your wall is not clean or it's not wet down first, is your cement, your mortar render, won't actually connect to the bricks underneath and it will fall off. So, two things we're trying to avoid. All right, so it's possible to use a hose or just a squirt bottle. And what you're trying to do is just wet down all the surfaces that you're about to try and work on. So the same with brick laying as well. You wet down your layer of bricks and your stack of bricks first as well. Now, with rendering, when you scrape your mud on, you'll get some droppage. And if you've got a clean surface below it, you can actually keep bringing that back up into your work. If you're doing face rendering and it's quality, obviously you want to control the finished appearance. In our circumstance here, we've got a little bit of latitude because there's another finish that's going on after it's rendered. The render is more of a leveling process here. But I'm doing it in a similar color. Now, because of that, it's not going to look like clean render all over. But the same process is what you would use if you're trying to get a clean render finish. So you want to wet it quite well. Basically what that happens is stops that moisture shock when the render first hits the brickwork. It doesn't just dry off on contact. So we'll start that off. Okay, now, the mixture we're gonna use is a 116 mixture, which is one lime, one cement, six plaster sand. So we've got a lime, cream cement, and we've got plaster sand, which the boys have been keeping safe over here. So the difference between plaster sand and bricklayer sand is plaster sand has been washed. It doesn't have any of the really fine layering, uh, the fine fines in the cement. And because of that, you get more of an open finish. It's not, it doesn't smooth over like concrete does. You see it's got quite a a sand texture there. That's what we're aiming for. So if you want to finish cream colored render, which was what we've got here and matching it, this is the mix that you would use. If you want different colors, obviously you'd add oxides or paint it afterwards. Although I don't know why you'd paint a perfectly well rendered wall. Um, I'm using odds and sods, leftover bits of stuff. So I have sieved my ingredients first. So I've put six sand in the bottom one cement and one lime, and it's all been through the sieve. And that's some of the rocks and rubble and bricks and stuff that's come out of it. The reason for that is you get rocks and rubble in your surface finish, you're not gonna get a nice smooth consistent finish. Sand goes in first, 
so at the bottom of your bucket of sand on it, as you're mixing it through, you get a nice fully mixed set of mortar or render coat as we're talking here. When you're doing small lots for home reno, get one of these. Really good. Stuck on the end of an SDS drill. And you can mix up a day's batch or an afternoon's batch or a you know before lunch batch really quite easily. This one's had a bit of a blowout there, so I'll weld that up at some point. But uh, any time we're doing bricklaying or something, we don't want to pull the mixer out. This is a perfectly good way of mixing up a smaller batch. All right, so that is that. I'll bring you back when I mix them.
pressure on that or still pulling around a little bit but that's a fairly reasonable layer down we've gone a little bit proud on these edges Any wet liquid it will be wetter at the bottom. Plaster finish would be a smoother finish than a ring finish. Perfect amount. The temptation at this point is just to keep playing with it. Try and make it smoother and flatter and everything like that. But no, now we just want to let it set off. Hello. Hello. Leakage. Leakage chops. So while we wait for that, we have our wooden float in water. And this is what helps us to get that open sand finish, is this wooden float. Alright, I'll move it. Right, let's see how we're going.
got a bit of a problem going on. Okay, so that's just a sand finish. Finish the edge. Flush up the back. Job done. And I'll dry off and then I'll get it finished. See those lines there? That's because we didn't bother taking the other layer back far enough.